This is Com Central. Channel open for executive order AUC 3423. Listen to this voice. War and Peace in the Global Village. Text by Marshall McLuhan, 1968. We are now in the midst of our first television war. Television began to be experienced in the ordinary home after 1946. Typically, the FBI and CIA were looking in the rearview mirror for revolutionary agents who were threatening the identity of the country. The television environment was total and therefore invisible. Along with the computer, it has altered every phase of the American vision and identity. Television war has meant the end of the dichotomy between the civilian and the military. The public is now participant in every phase of the war, and the main actions of the war are now being fought in the American home itself. That the war is being fought in the American home as much as in Vietnam can be illustrated by noting some of the favorite music, painting, and literature of the young teenagers for nearly all of whom this war and all wars are anathema. To mention the Beatles is to evoke an image of non-melodic, oriental, and environmental resonance. The writings of John Cage are a monument to this revolution in which music departs from a narrative or story. Melhodos, melody, the musical road. There is no melody in primitive or oriental music because the road of song is a continuum known only to literate men. Song itself is a slowing down of speech. So that the songs of each culture are uniquely patterned by their speech. This is equally true of dance, since every culture that is, or ever was, possesses a unique ratio of sensory life that can be detected at once in its speech, its dances, or its songs. Any technological innovation in any culture, whatever, at once changes all these sensory ratios, making all the older songs and dances seem very odd and dated to the young. In all cases, sensory change is levered by new technological innovations, since new technology inevitably creates new environments that act incessantly on the sensorium. Failure to grasp this ideological and ecological fact now makes the works of Marx look as empty as that of Spangler. These giants spent their lives building up a descriptive story of changes for which they could assign no cause whatever. Yet, without the cause, counteraction is impossible, and the writer can merely ride the wave of change like a surfboarder. He may look very graceful and skillful, but the wave remains quite independent of him. Knowing the cause, it at least becomes optional whether one wishes to remove it or counteract it. For example, the Dutch elm tree disease can be defeated at the cost of $2,500 per tree, but it requires that all the trees be so treated. One tree cannot be saved by itself. Is not this somewhat like the human condition in general? The self-amputation, which we call new technologies, generate vast new environments against which the individual organism is quite helpless. The turned-on effect which penetrates the television generation inspires them to read books like Siddhartha by Hermann Hesse. Hesse was a favorite of the intellectuals in the 20s and plays a considerable role in the wasteland. Siddhartha is a story of violence as a quest for identity. It concerns the obsession of a gifted son of a wealthy Brahmin who leaves home to become a Samana. Asceticism, or self-denial, is such a form of violence. Expressed in terms of our Western environment today, the Sama strategy would consist of creating an environment untouched by any technology whatever, so that there would be no inputs to the sensorium, and hence no processing of any inputs. Literate man easily imagines that there is a direct correspondence between the input and the experience. 
He lives in a world of correspondences and matching and repetitions, which he calls rationality and science. Until very recently, any setup was scientific if it could be exactly reproduced or repeated. This, of course, can never happen in any moment of human experience. Every input is totally transformed. Gradually, Siddhartha discovers that no form of self-denial can alter the fact that environments as inputs are profoundly shaped by the individual. This part of the novel is called Awakening. The new strategy of exploration, which he sets himself, reads very much like an ordinary Western program of self-development. There is a rather tenuous division between war as education and education as war. Frequent references occur to the revolution in farming that goes hand in hand with our fighting in Vietnam. Perhaps less obvious is the aggressive and military character of sending medical missionaries to India to implement birth control campaigns. In the information age, it is obviously possible to decimate populations by dissemination of information and gimmickry. There's no question here of values. It's simple information technology being used by one community to reshape another. It's this type of aggression that we exert on our own youngsters in what we call education. We simply impose upon them the patterns that we find convenient to ourselves and consistent with available technologies. Such customs and usages, of course, are always past-oriented, and the new technologies are necessarily excluded from the educational <laughs> oh, yeah. establishment until yeah, the elders crazy, have relinquished man. power. These are necessarily excluded from the educational oh, yeah. establishment until yeah, the elders crazy, have relinquished man. power. This, of course, leaves the new technology entirely in the sphere of entertainment and games. Wipe your sinuses with what you know.